Hey there, Ride the Car Guy here, and today we're gonna add some underhood lighting. Today's an exciting day. It's our first video in the new workshop, as you can probably tell by looking at it and by the sound of the terrible, terrible echo that I uh, want to apologize for and promise that I'll work on. It's kind of funny that this is the first job in the new workshop because this is definitely something that you can do uh, in the parking spot of an apartment complex. It doesn't really matter where you live. You can add some underhood lighting to your vehicle nice and easily. So uh, that's what we're gonna do today. Let's jump right into it. I'll show you what kit I got and we'll get to installing it. All right, the kit I am going with today is the Cyclone LED kit by KC Lighting. This kit has two ring LEDs that we're going to mount, of course, under the hood. They are nice and small, so they have less than, well, actually just over a half inch depth and they are about two inches, a little over two inches in diameter. I also picked up some rare earth magnets. I'm gonna use these to, um, well, to mount the lights underneath the hood, so that way I can move them around or remove them if I need to. I'll make sure to put a link to both of these down in the description below in case you wanna pick up this exact kit and follow along with this video. Let's go ahead and open up this kit and see everything that it comes with. All right, so this KC kit, Comes with zip ties, cool, that's fun. Our two light rings, so there's one, and the other one was being displayed there. So there they are. Oh, Casey sticker, absolutely. Can't live without that. And all the wiring required, which is really nice. So in here we have some nice decorative loom, also helps uh, protect the wires from chafing. There's our negative cable positive with a switch with a weatherproof cover on it. That's really nice. Looks like we also have a mounting, looks like a little mounting plate for, uh, for the switch, so that's nice. So between the magnets and the kit, that should be just about everything that we need to get this installed, so uh, let's go do it. All right, so let's start today with some planning. I feel like I don't, I feel like I don't plan enough, and if I plan, it's gonna go a little bit better, I, I, or at least I think so, so let's try. So right here, I have my uh, positive cable, and then of course we have the way to connect to the battery. It's already heat shrunk, the connection's already there, so that's pretty awesome. We have our inline fuse also already provided. And then we have our switch. So from there, after the switch, it splits off. And then of course it goes to each light, right? And then again, the connections are already in place with some connectors already on it. So if we just set this near the positive side of the battery, which is of course is right here. Set that aside. Try not to get it to actually touch the post. You certainly don't want that right now, but I'm just gonna make it where there's enough space here where I can deal with it. And then wrap that around. Just kind of lay it up here and see how far we can get with these. Oh yeah, we can go pretty much wherever we want, which is kind of nice. And now that I'm actually looking at this, uh, as you can see, obviously my insulation's gone. I had some rodent issues up in Michigan and they ate it all away. So I already took this out, but if you already have it, you're gonna have some mounting clips that uh, you'll have to pull out like with a body panel remover. But each one of those has a little hole in it. And I'm wondering, cause the kit came with screws and washers that you can just put through the, the center of the light and screw into this. And honestly, I think I might just do that because there are already a bunch of pre-drilled holes. So my current plan is to go ahead and run this, obviously positive and negative, up to probably, probably these holes or maybe the ones that are a little bit lower right here, or actually right here, I don't know. I haven't decided yet, but I'm gonna run the wires up to here from down below and get them into both locations, obviously positive and negative, and then we're gonna make our connections. So inside of here, there's gonna be sort of empty channels. This is just a support structure for the hood. So I'm thinking if I take my cables here, I might be able to feed them through and get them up here. Here's how I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna grab some kind of semi-rigid cabling, some stuff that will kind of move around when I move it. This stuff won't do that. So um, I'm just gonna take that and I'm gonna feed it through first. And so I'm gonna push it through here, wherever I wanna feed my cable. And then, what I'll do, is if I start to sort of twist it here, let's see. Wow, what kind of luck is that? Did you guys see that? 
it literally just fell through the center hole. So that was pretty amazing. Well, my plan was, by the way, because this just worked out, but my plan was to grab some needle nose pliers and just go grab it like that. But uh, this literally just popped through. So uh, lucky day. It was zoomed in too far, but no joke, it literally just popped out of this hole, which is pretty awesome. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab, now that I have this cable through both sides, I'm going to attach all three actually, well technically four, I'm gonna grab all four of these. Might be a bit tricky actually, but, so in succession here, I'm gonna take all four of these, tie them to this cable, probably just tape them real quick, and then pull them all the way through to the center. All right. All right. So this looks kind of crazy, but bear with me. I, I honestly think this will work. All right, so I'm gonna gently feed it through this first hole here. There we go. Awesome, all four of those are in. So now I just need to gently grab this and feed them through. Use this to guide. If you're doing this, use this to guide it, not to like pull it through. Because if you start to pull on this, it's just gonna disconnect these. So be pushing them in with the left hand and pulling them with the right. Ooh, that is perfect. Look at that. Great, so now all I need to do is disconnect all four of these. And this is just, you know, good old fashioned painter's tape. So this will come right off. Awesome, now that these are through, I'm just gonna finish pulling my guiding cable through. And then here we go. Now, obviously if you decide to keep your insulation, you could probably just run it under your insulation, right? Nothing too special there. And then you just have to figure out maybe just drilling a hole or, or gently cutting a hole through it to feed your cables. Um, but I don't plan to put my insulation back in. So that's why I'm doing it this way. Um, the only thing I really need to do now for protecting it is just kind of getting some loom. And obviously loom doesn't need to run through the whole thing, but enough loom that it protects it around these edges on both sides. Next, I actually wanna mount my lights because I wanna make sure I have enough wire pulled through and not more than I need. So what we're gonna do is again, I, des uh, I decided against using the magnets. I'll still show you how to connect the magnets if you want, but either way, I'm going to um, check the depth. So if you're gonna use a screw, that, like what comes with the kit, you wanna make sure you check the depth if you're gonna use one of these because this one, for instance, is more shallow than this one. So you just wanna be super, super careful. And I'm just actually gonna do this by grabbing a little, um, I don't know, a little poker thing. What the hell do you call this? I have no idea. But uh, it's a small piece of steel. I'm gonna slide it in and basically just grab my finger right at the edge, and then I'm gonna see my distance that I have. So now that I have this distance, I'm gonna line up my screw, and honestly, that's too close for comfort. So I know that I'm not gonna use that hole because this screw will likely uh, go ahead and hit the actual top of the hood, which is absolutely the last thing we want, right? So if I check this depth over here, I'm one of the bigger ones, pull it out, and now we have a lot more. So if you look at this one, for instance, yeah, we have more than enough space to use that. So just double check your depth and make sure you're not literally screwing up your hood. So now I'm just gonna grab my light, grab my screw, put it through there, and then screw it in. All right, so there's one. And there's the other, perfect. Another thing you may want to be careful of is based on where you mount them, uh, you know, relative to the things in the engine. So obviously pretty much anywhere shouldn't be a problem because you had, at least for me, I had the insulation, which was about a half inch thick or maybe a little bit less um, across the entire cover here. But also I'm mounting them in places where there's nothing underneath, right? There's a lot of space underneath where I'm mounting both of these lights. So it shouldn't be a problem. So now that I have these, I'm kind of realizing that uh, the middle hole probably isn't the best for running these. So I'm probably gonna pull two of these back. So I'll pull, I'll pull two of them back here, and then the other two I'm gonna keep going up further on the right and get those to go out that hole.
And now I'm actually just gonna make my connections just so I know the correct lengths that I need. So let's just plug those in. Once we add some loom, I think it's gonna look pretty great actually. So let's see. Again, I'm gonna make my connections. Nothing special here, black to black, red to red. Try not to break it. And now actually we can test them if we want. I have uh, the switch in the on position. If I grab my positive and my negative, these should light up. Oh, that is nice. All right, so that'll give me the motivation I need to get this done. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna pull this through, all four of them. There we go, there's that one, that one over there. And then pull that other positive through. Nice, okay, look at that. Next we're gonna take some loom, and if you've never used loom before, it's actually not too bad. Uh, it's just got a split on one side. So you can see here, um, oh, all, that's what these are. <laughs> all, just occurred to me. Anyways, so you'll see it's split down one side. And so basically you just gotta feed the wires in and uh, push them on, it's really that easy. So I'm just gonna start on this side, doesn't really matter. And feed this on, there we go. Yes. And for this last bit here, I'm gonna pull some out so that way when I pull it back in, the loom is protecting the wires around this metal edge here. There we go, that should work. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this. Regular scissors should do. There we go. Officially snap it all on, perfect. That way when we pull this through, there you go. We have a good solid couple inches uh, of loom inside of here protecting it. We're gonna do the same over here and then do the same over there as well and get all three places where it actually goes through the metal support structure protected by the loom. All right, so I'm gonna finish up the loom once I get the rest of the connections in place, but now I wanna mount my switch and of course uh, make sure that I have enough length to get to all, both of the battery connections. So for this, I'm thinking, I'm thinking I'm actually gonna mount it using the existing hole on the radiator, what, this looks like the radiator fluid reservoir, there's gonna be a mounting uh, bolt right on the side into the inner fender. So I'm gonna try it and I'll let you know if it works out that way, I'll show you how I did it. So yeah, it looks like I can make this work. So what we're gonna do is take our bracket. And so the bracket that actually comes with the kit allows you to of course mount it somewhere. And then this is where the switch goes through. So we're gonna take the pieces off the switch, I already did, but I just unscrewed the uh, sort of weatherproof cap, unscrewed the, the connecting nut, and of course the on off position indicator. So I'm just gonna take this, set this aside for now, but then I'm gonna mount this, and I'm gonna mount it like this here. So I'm gonna mount it basically where uh, the plate is sort of facing the back or the, the firewall, if you will. So to do that, we're just gonna take this nut out. This is just a 10 millimeter. So just go ahead and grab that. Awesome. And that nut that ends up coming out uh, already fits through this. So I, di I didn't have to modify this plate at all. It will just slide right through. And then we just mount it back on. Tighten it back down, at least some of the way. Doesn't have to be all the way tight because you may want to rotate this a little bit to kind of install it easily. There we go. Excellent. So now we just need to take our switch and before you install your switch, make sure that the wires are kind of ran where you want them to be run because it might be a little bit difficult to do that after you start attaching this. So I'm going to attach mine where the wires are pointing down and for that, I'm just gonna push it through here. There we go. So it looks like that. 
Hopefully you can see that. And now I'm going to grab my little position indicator, which frankly doesn't really matter, uh, mostly because uh, I don't care. I don't care which side is on, which side is off. Obviously, you uh, will be able to tell if it's on by looking at the lights and see if they are, in fact, making light. Put that on there. And, well, I just dropped it into the engine bay, so now it's gone forever. Goodbye, indicator. Um, <laughs> never, gonna, never to be seen again. So then I'm just going to take my nut here. This is what we can't drop into the engine bay. And then put that on here. Now, this is, might be a little tight, so I'm going to... Uh, Guess be really careful. Excellent, so I have that connected. After that's in and tight, we're just gonna install our protective uh, sort of all weather cover. All right, this is looking great. I have a, it's a very discreet install. And so it's just right there. I can just kind of stick my finger in there, decide which way um, I want it switched, of course, on or off. And also just a reminder, this here, if you want to make this job a little easier, this comes out relatively easily. You just have to pop this sort of like body panel clip so uh, where it attaches to the reservoir. And this whole thing can pull directly out of your uh, washer fluid tank. And then you can have a lot of room here, but um, I didn't bother with that. Now, all we need to do is make our connections to the battery. Uh, we could have used this same mount if we wanted to to kind of use for our negative, but I figured it'd be kind of messy. So I'm just gonna run this negative cable to the obviously negative terminal on the battery, then the positive to the positive terminal, and then we're, we're done, that's it. So let's do that. Now like 99% of the bolts on this car, these are 10 millimeter. So I'm just gonna back this one out, and then, uh, well, probably this one as well. So I'll back this one out and this one out, and then just drop our connections on, and then we're done. All right. We're gonna have to find a body mount for the, uh, for the negative here, so that's all right. We'll tuck that, tuck that aside. So I did end up doubling up on the mount. I used it as my ground as well um, because I didn't wanna like move the battery to find another body ground. So I'll just use that. And then the last thing we need to do is just take our 10 millimeter, pull this nut off here on the positive side. All right. Drop it on here. There we go. And tighten it down. Excellent. Grab our little switch here. Woo! Yeah, that definitely works. Very good. I'm going to grab some zip ties. Just kind of, you know, clean this up. Zip tie it to something else. Make sure it's, you know, doesn't look terrible and that it's not going to be flying around the engine bay. And then we're done, folks. So this is it, installation done, and let's check it out. Oh, I love the way that looks. The entire engine bay is just flooded with light. And you can just see everything. Oh my gosh, I should have done this years ago. So we have our switch in a nice discreet spot. It's quick and easy to turn on and off, and uh, it gives us excellent light. So let's, I'm gonna turn off the lights inside of the shop, and I'm gonna give you an idea of just how bright these lights are. All right, let me stumble my way over here. Find it. There you go. That is no joke. I love how bright this is. Here you go, check it out. I have absolutely no lights on anywhere else. Check it out, I'm in a dark room. It is excellent. Couldn't be happier. So clearly I am pleased. It turned out so, so well. And even with them off, the installation looks pretty clean with all of that loom. And of course, running it through the support structure. So really good stuff, I couldn't be happier. If you did decide to use the magnets, all you would have to do is take the magnets, basically stick them to the hood, make sure you know which side is going to stick to the hood itself, mark the other side, and then pull them off and just glue them to the bottom of your lights. And then that way you have some lights that you can actually move around 
underneath the hood whenever you need to. Other than that, folks, I wanna thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like this video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Uh, pick up a t-shirt if you wanna support the channel. Link in the description. And that's it. I'll see you in the next one.